I'm willing to bet that some of these Zelda games I'm about to go over in this video you've never played before, maybe potentially even heard of. Let's see if I'm right on my prediction. Let's start things off with a first person shooter. Well, sort of. <laughs> Link's Crossbow Training was a spin-off Zelda game developed for the Wii, and it was a game that featured action shooter gameplay rather than the traditional RPG genre that most of us Zelda fans were familiar with. The game was released as a companion to Twilight Princess and reuses many of the game's assets such as character models and settings to create a Zelda-themed shooter with plenty of its own personality. Originally, Nintendo planned for Link's Crossbow Training to have an epic story that would add to the events of Twilight Princess. However, at the time, and this was pretty interesting to me, producer Miyamoto pushed the entire team, and I covered this in a Zelda video a couple months back, he pushed his team to keep the story simple so Zelda fans could enjoy the unique gameplay of this spin-off title. Easily one of the biggest criticisms of Link's crossbow training was its short runtime. Link's first person shooter adventure can be beaten in literally one hour. That's pretty interesting, right? <laughs> If you are a completionist like yours truly, it would take you about five hours, but even that still is a very short Zelda game compared to what we're used to, you know? Putting the short game length aside, the game definitely incorporated a lot of different aspects of Twilight Princess in so many clever ways that make the game fun and entertaining. One of the parts of the game that really sticks out to me is when you go to that lost city, and I am completely drawing a blank on what it's called in Twilight Princess, but anyway, you go into this hidden city and you just start sniping Pokeballs left and right, and that was such an amazing part of that game. If you like that part of the game, then Link's Crossbow Training might be a game worth trying. That is, if you can somehow find it. If you do, DM me on Twitter at DRockPlays and send me a copy as well. Maybe I could stream it sometime for you. Link's Crossbow Training is also one of the very few games of the Wii's lifespan to utilize the Wii Zapper. And if you are too young to know what I'm referring to, it's sort of like an attachment for the Wii Remote and Nunchuck that made shooters way easier to control. On to another Zelda game that you probably have never played, and it involves a little green friend that tends to pop up periodically throughout the Zelda franchise. Actually, I will be referring to three games in this section of the video, so if you enjoy my voice, you're welcome. If you don't, <laughs> my apologies. Tingle is one of the Zelda franchise's most bizarre characters, and I think you and I can most definitely agree on this one, right? <laughs> I mean, he looks like a 50-year-old man in green tights. No judgment here. <laughs> I mean, you do you, man, but it's definitely creepy nonetheless. Anyways, Tingle's first appearance in the Zelda series was in Majora's Mask, one of the best, in my opinion, for the Nintendo 64 before eventually reappearing in the other Zelda games like Wind Waker, Four Swords Adventure, and the Minish Cap. This was pretty interesting as well, at least to me. Did you know that the reason Tingle ended up being cut from Twilight Princess was due to his lack of popularity with American fans of the Zelda series? While this was definitely a thing, Nintendo still decided to honor him with a few non-canon side quest games that featured him as the playable protagonist. Freshly picked Tingle's Rosie Rupee Land, say that five times fast, <laughs> Tingle's Balloon Fight and Ripened Tingle's Balloon Trip of Love were all released for the Nintendo DS between 2006 and 2009, and while Tingle's Rosie Rupee Land was released in Europe, the other games were exclusive to Japan, and Tingle's Balloon Fight was only available from members of Club Nintendo. It's pretty interesting. In Tingle's Rosie Rupee Land, you would have to gather as many rupees as possible to keep Tingle alive and donate to the fairy spring outside of his house. The game provided a bizarre backstory befitting one of the Zelda franchise's strangest characters, and again, I think we can agree there, as the character is transformed into Tingle from an average 35-year-old man by the mysterious Uncle Rupee, tying Tingle's life energy to the rupees he earns. Now, in order to win, you have to earn rupees by helping people, defeating dungeons, and even bartering. But with the game's Sonic-like health system, Tingle will die if his wallet is empty. 
Just a quick side note here, I have never played these single games either, so don't feel left out for lack of a better phrase if you haven't played or even heard of these Zelda games before. I got you fam. Tangle's Balloon Fight is a crossover game featuring the classic gameplay of a balloon fight with a distinctly tingle aesthetic. The game featured both balloon fight and balloon trip mode, allowing you to float through obstacles and pop enemy balloons. Sounds pretty interesting, I guess. <laughs> Ripen Tingle's Balloon Trip of Love, on the other hand, is a sequel to Tingle's Rosy Ruby Land, but instead of earning as many rupees as possible, you have to help Tingle escape a picture book by romancing and dancing with the princess of the story. It sort of returns to the same visual style of Tingle's Rosy Ruby Land and includes some of its RPG mechanics, but the game primarily features point and click puzzles making it unique among the strangest of Zelda non-canon spin-off games. Next up, the BS Zelda games. No, that, that's not a downplay or an insult to the Zelda series, it's an abbreviation of the full title, which is the Broadcast Stella View Zelda games. Since for some reason I have a really hard time pronouncing that name and luckily editing is my friend, <laughs> let's just refer to this part of the video as the BS Zelda games. Okay, awesome. BS Zelda games were created as a part of a collaboration of sorts between Nintendo and Japanese radio company Saint Giga. Both the original Legend of Zelda and The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past were remade and broadcast to the Stellaview, a subsystem for the Super Famicom that allowed you to download and play media via satellite. The BS Zelda spin-offs <laughs> I can't get over that. Which included the original BS Zelda as well as Ancient Stone Tablets were exclusive to Japan and were only broadcasted to the system once per week for an hour at a time. Interesting. This allowed you to experience special game events in real time and listen to guides and tips with the game's unique radio integration. As a result, the BS Zelda games were not only the first video games to ever be radio integrated, but they were also the first Zelda games to feature a voiced dialogue. The first BS Zelda broadcast began way back in 1995, so I was what, three at the time, <laughs> I think? St. Giga continued to broadcast the game regularly until the year 2000. While the games are almost identical to the original Zelda titles they remade, there are some notable differences in gameplay and in-game environments, and you as the player were even able to choose the character's gender as they played as the Hero of Light rather than Link. Of all the non-canon games in the Zelda series, the BS Zelda games are perhaps some of the most obscure, but they stand out as a unique part of the franchise's long history and like other Legend of Zelda games were technologically pioneers in their own way. I think that's some pretty fascinating stuff, right? Hey listen, see what I did there? <laughs> if you found value in this video, click on this video right here to see another Zelda video that I really think you're going to dig. This one coming up on your screen next is a Zelda video that YouTube thinks you will enjoy watching. Let me know if they were right. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. I'm DRock. Much peace and love. Let's jump on over to one of those other Zelda videos. I'll talk to you over there.